Joining us now, she's former player at Washington. She's uh, got promoted this past offseason to the associate head coach at Ohio State in her second year. Speak of Whitney Jones, good friend joining us here at In the Circle for uh, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back, Elo. Always great catching up with you. Great catching up with you. Let's talk about that headline in the offseason. You're now the associate head coach. Just take me through that process this offseason and what that title means. Yeah, I mean, I think titles are titles at the end of the day. Like my biggest philosophy is, you know, impact the people you're around every day and lead where you're at, regardless of a title. But I mean, just from a professional standpoint, having this title and this elevation is just huge for my development and the trajectory of where I'm trying to go in this sport. So I'm grateful for um, the promotion, but also still me, still leading and um, trying to affect our young women every day. And um, yeah, on the same goal and same mission here. This is your second year. How do you, when you reflect in year one, when you made the move to Ohio State, you may, and you mentioned, uh, you know, one of the reasons you made that move is because your goal eventually, it's no secret, you want to be a head coach down the road. Uh, how was that transition for you in year one? Offensively, obviously, hit 304 as a team, the best since 2015. So clearly the players certainly uh, adjusted well to you. How did you adjust? You know, I came in and I think the biggest thing for me coming into this environment was just establishing relationships, establishing a team offensive culture. Um, how are all of our pieces going to work together? How does everybody see value and what they bring to our offense? And how can we put all the pieces together to be an efficient offense? And so coming in, I think Coach Kelly gave me tons of autonomy to kind of take it and run with it. And the players bought in from day one. And it was, I mean, of course you have your bumps and bruises along the way, but them just buying in from day one and um, just really pouring into what we're trying to do. And um, we saw we saw benefits there from that from last season as well. But of course, at the same time, it was unfortunate how we ended our season last year. And of course, we're not happy about that. And we're knowing we're gonna work harder than we've ever had to work this year to leave no doubt come May 12th that we're, we're in, so. You mentioned despite the 33 wins, uh, you didn't make the NCAA tournament. What's been the message to this team? Is that something, have you noticed from the returners, a bit of a chip on the shoulder because of that, a little bit of a fuel there? Absolutely. I mean, no one ever wants to be sitting on the couch and watching and knowing that they're not going to make it. And I think it was definitely like gut-wrenching for a lot of us. And, you know, the message has been, we're going to have to work harder than we've ever worked in our lives before. And it's going to be hard and just embracing the hard and knowing that it's gonna take each and every one of us. And our incoming class has been amazing from a work ethic standpoint. They've come in and they've just like literally put their nose to the ground and they're working really hard and they're bringing energy to everybody else. I think just having an incoming class that is grinding, getting after it, they want more. Um, it's just kind of driving, you know, some people, fourth seniors, fifth years, you're like, okay, yep, we got to do this again. And your bodies might be a little bit more, but just having that incoming freshman class come in and just they're working hard, they're getting after it has been huge. It's been huge for our team. It's been huge for our culture. Of course, we have two fifth year seniors and they know they've been there. They want more too. And our two returning senior pitchers, like this is it for them. And like, they want to take this group somewhere they haven't been before. And they know it's going to take a lot of work and it's going to be hard. So we've just kind of been pushing like it's going to be hard and you're going to have some bad days in there, but we got to keep keep pushing each other and we got to keep, you know, working harder than we've ever worked before. It's going to take more than you've ever done in your life. You return a, a core of that offense. Talk about mm -hmm. the returners first offensively. Who are some of the leaders on that offensive side and, and kind of your thoughts on some of them uh, and, and sort of their impact on the team? Absolutely. You know, with Mel Wilkinson coming back and she's a huge part of our, our offense last year, just her ability to hit for power, to just be scrappy. She creates chaos. Um, she's competitive. She's got that chip on her shoulder. Um, she's that person that you want on your team and, you know, other people kind of, she's just chippy and it's great for our offense. Great competitively, you know, returning Cammy Cordacracks. She's another huge part of our offense. Um, and then Sam Hackenbrack is going to be a fifth year senior for us as well. And just the experience she's had, uh, just her desire to be, you know, she wants to be an All-American. She wants to take this team further than they've ever been. And just her drive and desire to do that too is, is huge for our team. And then Caitlin Farley is another piece of our puzzle that, you know, just lefty. She was able, she's kind of at the bottom of the lineup, 
turning it over and then we put her in the lead off and she's just been consistently effective and she's had power for us offensively. She's been able to, you know, play some short game as well in there. And um, I think those pieces of our offense returning, they, they were huge for us last year and they're going to continue to get better and continue to sharpen their sword so that they can, you know, be just as effective, if not better this year um, in their roles for us offensively. And, you know, we brought in five position player hitters. So, you know, they've also been amazing with Jazzy Burns. Jazzy Burns came in and she's, had a great fall offensively. I mean, she kind of fit around to where she fits and we put her kind of in the heart of the lineup and she literally just took in around with it. She just steps in the box like a pro. She um, has this presence and aura about her that you would never think she's a freshman. She is competitive. She's got pop. So she's going to be a huge part of our offense this year. And Taylor Cruz is another one outfielder who's just come in and she's put her nose to the ground. She's got tons of power, tons of speed. She has tons her game too that's just gonna help our offense this year too so I would expect those two to play a huge piece for us offensively and um you know incoming class Lottie Landmesser she's made an impact for us as well on both sides of the ball and defensively her skills are you know are elite so we're excited for that and Kaden Ruffer and Haley Lang have also been you know huge pieces of our freshman class as well so like I said we have a great freshman class who everybody on our team has just been impressed with. They love their work ethic. They love their energy and um, this whole group as a whole are excited to get after it and, and really go for something that this group hasn't done before. You take, you know, you take though the offense, how do you make sure that the players kind of buy into your system and are able to adapt quickly? Cause that's been kind of your pattern. It was the same at UCF, same and now at Ohio state where there's a, you know, they adapted very quickly and produce high numbers. How do you do that as a coach? What do you look for in a player to make sure that you get the most out of them, but at the same time, it's not a long process of figuring it out? Relationships are huge. So I would say that's kind of been number one. Coming into an environment and learning your people, I think has been something I've made an effort to do coming into both programs or any program I've been in, and then kind of meeting them where they're at. Um, there's certain things offensively that we want to see and we want to accomplish, but we can accomplish those things in many different ways. So within that relationship, just learning the person, learning the hitter, and as a coach, finding ways to, after learning them and the type of hitter they are, how can I find ways to be effective with each one of them individual to get the outcome I want? And so I think when I'm saying that, it's not necessarily like, everybody has to look a certain way or everyone has to do it a certain way. It's like, okay, this is the way, how can I get this person to achieve that way or this person to achieve that way? Or, you know, so I think it's building those relationships and kind of having more of a one-on-one -on -one approach within a collective philosophy that makes them feel like, hey, like I don't need to completely change who I am, but like this is gonna help me be who I need to be for the offense. And so it's just kind of having that give and take blend of, you know, we wanna help them reach their goals for themselves and for our offense. And, um, but also like, you can, it's hard to beat a confident hitter. So we wanna also continue to, you know, make them feel like they know what they're doing, like they're empowered to do it and that they're gonna be successful to do it as well, so. Talk about the pitching staff a little bit since you get to see them in the fall of there. Obviously, you lose, you know, you got to took a couple of seniors, as you mentioned. Tell us a little bit about the pitching staff for, for this year's team. Yeah, so we are returning our whole staff from last year and more experience under all their belts. And, you know, going into this, like I mentioned, it's Allison and Ruck's senior year. And, you know, they want this group to achieve something they haven't achieved before. And, you know, they realize that it's going to take more than what we did last year. It's going to take, you know, getting better and and being effective as a group and as a pitching staff. And I think just having that experience going through that and, you know, they've been working hard this fall. They've been working hard to just continue to work together, be effective um, in their own ways. Because I think, you know, being a pitching staff, you have to know your strengths and how all those strengths work together as a staff to be effective against an opposing offense. I think they've just been really pushing each other and figuring out like how that group's going to work together to beat offenses. That's it's a very experienced group. Uh, is it a very close group? How would you describe this group of personalities? They are very close. I mean, all of our pitchers are from 
the state of Ohio. So they all, you know, have known each other. They've kind of grown up playing against each other, being around each other. And so they're very close. They spend a lot of time together in the bullpen. Um, you know, they work out, they have their own pitcher workouts where they're together there. So they know each other really well. They are able to give each other honest feedback. And at the end of the day, like they know it's going to take each and every one of them working together. So. Talk a little, let's talk about the staff a little bit. Uh, like I said, you were his, the associate head coach. Uh, Jed McIntyre was on the staff last year. She's now, uh, at, you know, out of coaching there, stepped, uh, stepped out. And you got some new faces on the coaching staff. So tell us a little bit about the coaching staff and kind of what each co coach does. Yeah, so of course, Coach Kelly is entering her 12th season here. And, um, you know, Coach Kelly works primarily with the pitchers and, of course, manages our whole team and our whole staff. And then Coach Cami Uxley, she was promoted. She was on staff, I believe, four or five years prior. And she's now in that assistant coaching role. And she's primarily taking over our defense and working with our defense. Um, you know, she played at Ohio State and she's passionate about our program, passionate about taking us, you know, to places we haven't been before. And she also knows our players really well as well. Um, and then Coach Kelsey Stewart Hunter, she's a new addition to our staff and she has been amazing. She is competitive. She's still playing. She brings that championship level perspective and expectation to us daily. And you felt her presence since day one being here. And I know this is her first coaching role and she's just really thriving here in this environment. And our players are really loving to learn from her, loving the dynamics she brings to our team. Um, and so, you know, we have kind of a young staff and I think it's fun. It's fun to have that young energy around every day. All of us throw live, all of us can kind of do all the things we can jump in. The other day we had, um, we were running a drill and all the, all the staff was basically against the players in the drill and we we're all in the field just like playing against them. So it was just fun, you know, might've got some rip Lulu's in the, in the process, but um, you know, we're competitive and we have energy and we bring it every day. And so I think our players appreciate that. And um, you know, coach Kelsey, she's been huge kind of helping everywhere. She's been helping me a lot with the offense. She's also been helping a lot with defense. She has so many tools and can help us in so many areas. And so um we're just happy to have her and happy to have, you know, that rule change and have, you know, three assistants now. And she's been able to go out and recruit. And it's just been, it's been a great dynamic for our team. Yeah. I'd say when you had a uh, Kelsey Stewart, her resume, that's pretty good. Right. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. Absolutely. It's amazing. It's been great. How did that come about? I didn't know she was interested in getting into coaching. Obviously you still play. What, how did that come about? So our Kelsey and I actually go back to Athletes Unlimited. She, that year I was there in 2020 as a facilitator, um, she of course was playing and her and I were able to connect. And we also, I mean, our playing careers overlap too. So my career ended at her alma mater stadium. And so we actually played, you know, against each other and um, we've known each other throughout this whole process in the softball world and the position opened up and, you know, some people are like, is it actually open? Is it actually something that you're actively looking? Do you already know? And so she reached out and she was like, are you guys like still looking for this position? And I was like, absolutely. And then she applied and reached out and connected and she came out for an interview and it was, it's the right fit for where we're trying to go. Yeah. It's going to be pretty good. Intriguing, intriguing to have her on the staff there and uh, adding there to the Buck guys. Uh, team. We were speaking with Whitney Jones, Associate Head Coach, Ohio State here on In the Circle. Let's talk a little bit about you. First, growing up, what got you into softball? Oh, what got me into softball? I would definitely say is my older brother and my dad. So my older brother, I grew up kind of in the stroller at the baseball field. Um, and then as soon as I was kind of old enough to walk, I was playing softball. And I think, you know, playing up and growing up and playing in Southern California, softball and baseball is the sport you can play year round and it's pretty popular everywhere. And so um, my dad was definitely a huge influence. My dad played pro ball for the Braves for quite a while before um, snapping his Achilles and having um, a back injury. So I think just growing up being around it it's made me want to get into it. And ever since I've been in it, I've had a passion for it. And just I've had very impactful, influential coaches throughout my life that have made me want to be that impact and influence to the next generation. So whether it be strength and conditioning or, you know, I grew up playing for Marty Tyson. Um, I've just had some amazing coaches that have truly changed my life and impacted me. And so it's inspired me to want to be that for the next generation. 
this is what God called me to do. So this is where I'm at, and this is what I'm loving to do. You ended up playing, uh, going to Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, describe your time at Washington as a player there and uh, playing for Coach Tar, because well, you eventually would join the staff afterwards. Absolutely. So growing up, I was a pitcher, outfielder, hitter, and wanted to do all three in college and was able to do all three in college and had kind of a crazy career. I, you know, backwards, I pitch left-handed, throw left-handed, but I hit right-handed and going into college, I did all three of those as well. Well, the competitiveness in me after my freshman year was like, well, what about being a switch hitter? And so Coach Tar was like, let's try it out. Let's go for it. And so I ended up switching to the left side my sophomore year and started out as slapping. It was just kind of it's not a good matchup right handed. Let's go to the left side and just try and put the ball in play and like get on base and use your speed. So that whole fall, I kind of focused on transitioning over to the left side and end up slapping my sophomore year. And to be completely honest, had a tough time. Like it was probably one of the hardest years of my career because I was kind of, you know, came in and pitched and then was kind of switching to the left side and like trying to figure out my role on the team and kind of finished my sophomore year, like what just happened? You know, I, I wanted to switch to kind of have more opportunities and it felt like I did the opposite. And so going into my junior year, it was like, okay, what does the team need right now? And what the team needed more than anything was a hitter outfielder. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to become a left-handed hitter and an outfielder. So going into my junior year, I like completely came in as a left-handed pitcher, right-handed hitter that plays outfield to ending my junior, senior year being a left-handed hitter and an outfielder. And so um, throughout my time at Washington as a player, I probably played every role you could think of as a player. And I think back on it now, and at the time you're like, man, why do I like, why do I have to go through all this? You know, like, why is it like this hard? And you look back on it now and you're like, well, as a coach, being able to relate to everybody in every role that they've been in, it's, it's super helpful. And so at the time, you know, there were some tough times throughout my career, but stuck through it and fought through it and, you know, finished my junior, junior year at the World Series playing and competing and um, starting, which was amazing. And then, you know, like I mentioned earlier, ended my uh, softball career at Supers in Gainesville. And, um, you know, I just, I'm thankful now that I did have the career that I did because, you know, I was able to learn from both sides of the plate. I was able to pitch and know what that's like in the, in the PAC 12. And then I was able to also play a position and I just, all these experiences have just helped shape me to who I am and the coach I am today. So um, I'm super thankful for my time at Washington and, you know, coach Tar is second to none when it comes to building a culture and just the things I've learned from her and just, you know, how you operate on a daily basis, how you be a pro, how you leave things better than you found them. You know, there's so many things that I learned as a player and a coach there that I take with me daily wherever I go. Coaching always the plan or did that kind of evolve as you were playing? Coaching was always, I would say, the plan. Now, I started out wanting to be a strength and conditioning coach. And I did an internship my junior summer at the University of Tulsa as a strength and conditioning coach because my strength and conditioning coach as a player at the time had connections there. And I was like, I would love to get in this field. I would love to work with softball and be a strength and conditioning coach and do it at the highest level. And so I started out in that field of work, but I was very adamant about softball being like the primary sport I worked with. Like I wanted, I would work other sports in that field, but I had to work with softball. Like that was my passion. That's what I wanted to do. And at the time, after finishing my graduate assistantship and looking for what was next, not too many opportunities popped up that would have me working with softball as a primary sport. I was kind of in that like transition mode, not really knowing what was next, but knowing like I wanted to coach, I wanted to be around athletics, but I knew the community I built in Seattle would always kind of be a place I could go back and continue to impact. So during that like three month summer transition, graduating in May and figuring out what was next, I ended up moving back to Seattle. And at that time, I didn't really know what was next. I knew I could like work at this softball academy with a former teammate, Shauna Wright. So I did that, coach travel ball there. And then during my time at Washington, I gave tons of like lessons and was pretty like involved in the community. And so a couple of people that I had known were like, hey, this inner city high school job is looking for a head coach. It'd be a great opportunity for you. Like it's tons of players that you've kind of had previous relationships with. They're gonna be, you know, like, ready to get after it. And so I applied for the job and it's right down the street, it's Garfield High School, right down the street from Washington. And I applied for the job, 
I go into their front office and I'm like sitting there waiting for the AD to call me back. And I'm looking around in the office and I'm seeing like all these trophies. I'm seeing like track and field trophies. I'm seeing basketball trophies. And I'm like, why not softball? Literally, I was going through my mind. I'm sitting in that office. I'm like, why not softball here? So I just going into that program, I was like, let's let's do something that's never been done before. And they bought in, they bought in from day one. And that year that team ended up going to state for the first time in program history. And then after that all happened, you know, Coach Carr reached out. And originally our first conversation was about me coming back on staff as a strength coach at Washington. And some things fell through and that didn't work out, but a position opened up on staff. And so it ended up being just as good. And I ended up running the staff and still having that, that was the following year, still having an impact in the strength and conditioning area. Um, and then was back at my alma mater for four years. And yeah. That's wild. What it was is. it about the strength and conditioning that you wanted so bad? What was it that you liked? Take, take me through that. Because that's interesting. Not everybody says, well, I'm debating strength and conditioning or softball code. You know, like what was it about the strength and conditioning that you liked so much? I loved training and I, I think it goes back to, to, I started as a freshman in high school and I had very impactful coaches in that space. So I started training at a facility out of Southern California that's become pretty popular. It's called EM, um, which stands for explosive methods and being in that environment. And like, I love getting after it in the weight room. I think it's just always been a safe haven for me. It's always been something I love doing. I've loved training. It's made me confident. It's made, it's just like my, it helps me be my best me. And so going into strength and conditioning, I was like, this is amazing. Like I get to affect these women in this space and help them be their best to be able to perform their best. And so that was kind of just something I've always loved training. I've never skipped a workout. I've always been like extra, like, let's do this, let's do that. Um, of course, I still have my certification. So I still, I think strength and conditioning and like, all of it applies, all of it aligns, all of it works together. And so um, I want to continue to stay educated in that field. I want to continue to, you know, be able to be well-rounded to help our athletes. And I think the way you move in the weight room also affects the way you hit. And so <laughs> if I can continue to have that perspective and continue to help our athletes, I think it only helps me be the best me. So that has actually helped you as far as your offensive philosophy and your 1000 percent. Right? I mean, being a strength and conditioning coach at Tulsa, I was able to go get CPI certified and just open up my horizons to what else is out there. And of course, now with on base U certifications and there's just so many things that directly correlate and apply. And so it's just great to continue to connect with professionals in that field and continue to get fun new ideas as well. Like hitters don't want to do the same thing all the time. So how can you like do the same thing, but do it in a different way and have fun, creative new ideas. You mentioned obviously working back eventually to the staff at Washington kind of worked out, you know, cause there was a spot open. Uh, Absolutely. What was that like? Describe coach tar. Cause you get, you're one of the few that's had that kind of inner circle there, if you will, there, what is that like? And what did you take from coach tar that you now apply to your coaching, uh, philosophy and style there's so much there's so much where do I start uh coach Tar, she is the pro of all pros I the things that I take from coach Tar, just her desire to continue to grow and her desire to continue to be better and you know you can say like be better like leave things better than you found them but the actual intentionality behind like the process of what that takes or what that looks like and the accountability behind it as well. Like being on staff there, I mean, I was blessed. I, you know, like I'm literally feel like I'm literally learning from three head coaches. Like any one of those coaches on that staff could have easily been a head coach at any program. And so I was just consistently learning like the way and being like, they literally took me under their wing and taught me so much just from, I mean, Coach Hart gave me so much autonomy too. And I think of course part of it was playing for her. She knew me. I know her. Like, you know, we did a lot together. And I think there's a lot of similarities with just who we are as people. And she pushed me. She gave me tons of autonomy to, you know, run camp and have a say in a lot of things that maybe some other people didn't have a say and um, coaching team Seattle and, you know, just from a development standpoint. But when it comes to culture and when it comes to development, those are the two things I think of when I think to coach charge, just continuing to develop the game, teach the game and 
build a foundation that continues to sustain itself over time. Um, it's a championship culture. It's a part of that coaching tree too that she's built. You're part of that now. You got Jen <laughs> Sally at UCF. You got Victoria Haywood, who's now back at Washington mm -hmm. after time at San Diego State. Uh, yes. Among many, what well, talk to me talk to me about that tree because that that's growing every year. It is growing every year. I just think a huge part of what's taught under that tree is just giving back and being an ambassador of the sport. And when you see people continuing to thrive in our sport after graduating there and continuing to give back in whatever space it might be. I mean, Daniel Laurie being a commentator and, you know, Sis Bates is still a huge face in softball with, you know, she's on staff too there. And so just like seeing people that leave that program continue to have an impact in life and give back in whatever space they're in, I think just speaks to the type of people that come through that program, but the type of people that come out of that program and just wanting to continue to leave an impact on people. And, you know, us that are in the tree in softball right now coaching, like we want to continue to leave an impact on the people that were around. And just every conversation I have with Jen and Victoria is just like continuing to, how can we continue to grow and get better and continue to impact the young women we're around? And there's just like this mindset to continue to like push the envelope, continue to get better, continue to learn, continue to like be the best that we can be. And like, there's never, the feeling just keeps getting raised and it's like, all right, like what's next? And of course you have to appreciate the journey along the way, but there's just this like desire to teach, desire to develop and just desire to be be the best that we can be. Of course, another couple other uh, ties of coaches there to ties at Washington, uh, Kaya Gibson and Sydney Ball Malone, who you decided to come uh, leave Washington to come to Orlando at UCF, you and Kaya Gibson. Take me to what was it about that decision that led you to decide to leave Washington? Because there were some that were surprised that you left uh, yeah. as far as the region and everything like that. Take me through that right. one coming to Orlando. You know, opportunities kind of pop up here and, you know, opportunities are, you're kind of always filtering through like, what's the right opportunity? When's the right time? Like I mentioned before, I felt like at Washington, I was every year I was given, you know, more autonomy, more responsibility. I feel like I was continuing to grow. I'm around three of what I would consider the best coaches in the game that I'm learning from. And it was like, I didn't want to just leave just to leave or take any job, just to take any job. Cause like I said, at the very beginning, like titles, titles are important from a professional standpoint, but titles don't, determine leadership or impact in my opinion and so from you know being there for four years and like I said eventually like I want to be a head coach well it's like all right at some point you're going to have to spread your wings and you're going to have to see if all the things that you've learned and you've developed up to this point are going to be able to go into another environment and impact that environment and it was just the right time for me to spread my wings and go in another environment and see if all the things I had learned were going to be able to you know be impactful and be able to be successful at, in in the sport. And so it was just the right time for me to kind of spread my wings. And like you mentioned, I was coached by Cindy Ball Malone at Washington. So it was also going into an environment where I knew that the culture and the way was something that I valued and I respected. And I knew that it would be an environment where I could probably hit the ground, ground running and like thrive and taking Kaya, I didn't take Kaya, but Kaya coming along as well. And that added the cherry on top, just coaching Kaya, knowing Kaya. She's a phenomenal human being, her work ethic, her energy, just her knowledge. She also helped me coach on Team Seattle for a year. So there just had been a lot of, you know, growth between the two of us as well. And I can't speak more highly of Kaya. And I'm just super excited for her and her new role at Utah and um, just the impact she's going to continue having amongst young women in our sport. I was going to say, she's at Utah now. Uh, you've mm -hmm. been in those shoes, taking that, you know, a high profile assisted job, you know, after, you know, being a volunteer, what, any advice you've given her? Who you, be who you are at the end of the day. And, you know, like you, people want your authentic self every single day. People want a consistent, authentic self. And I think Kaya's learned that. I mean, Kaya also was the head coach of the vibe and she's had that's been another experience for her too that she's taking with her to Utah but just my my best advice to Kaya is always just to continue to be who you are like you have 
all your experiences, like Kaya, even her playing career too, Kaya played a lot of different roles as well. And being at UCF and she was given a ton of autonomy at UCF too to run the outfield and help with camp. So like just trusting all those experiences that you've had as a player and as a coach that they've shaped you to who you are and like you're exactly who you need to be for these young women and just continue to be yourself, continue to impact them every day and just shine your light. Like Kaya is, when Kaya's her best self, she is literally so full of energy, just getting after it in the dugout. Like Kaya loves this game. And so just her being her authentic self, I think is going to help her thrive everywhere she's at. Your year at UCF was historic, 49 wins, picked a good year, best year in the program's history to date. Uh, got a national seed for the first time in program history and got to win a regional at home for the first time in program history. What was it like to be a part of that, a team that's going to be remembered forever at a program that was doing something for the first time? Because when you're in Washington, you know, you've done a lot. You had one national title. You've been to the World Series. So, mm -hmm. you know, not to say that Husky fans are sport, but it's like been there, done that type of thing. But here, mm -hmm. there was a first for a lot of things. You're part, you know, what was that like? It was, I couldn't even put it into words. It was so intentional. I, like, I think intentional would be the word I would describe it. Like coming in from our first team meeting through every meeting we had from there on out to the end of the year, like we knew what our goals were. We knew what we wanted to do. We knew it was gonna be hard. We knew the schedule we had and we consistently checked in on where we were at and making sure that we knew where we needed to be to get where we wanted to go. I would just, Coach Bear's intentionality behind building the schedule that she built, knowing it was going to be as tough as it was. And then us as a staff, us as a program, the players, everybody being on board with that and working towards that and knowing, you know, you have these like, uh, what's the word I want to use? You have these like moments throughout the season where it's like you can go one way or the other. And I think just having that leadership too on the mound was huge for us because it was like as soon as you know, maybe one area needed the other to pick itself up. It did. And just I think the leadership on the mound was huge for us that year. Um, and just the leadership in general. I mean, there had been people with Emma coming on board and just literally her leadership, her competitiveness and Donna as well. Like she's been with Bear for, for so long and just those two working together. I would say were like the heart and the core of like that team. And of course the whole pitching staff came together to help us. But I mean, that was a huge piece to it. And the intentionality behind um, everything that led up to that moment. And, you know, with Shannon Doherty and Jada, Co Jada Cody, like their leadership as well, offensively on the field and just with the team, like all those pieces played a huge role to us getting where we wanted to be. And it was just so fulfilling to see them be able to accomplish that as a group, knowing, you know, we hit rough times throughout that season and there, it wasn't always easy, but just to see them push through and work together and, buy in and continue to, you know, have the honest conversations that need to be needed to be had and just find a way. It was amazing. Pretty amazing. Uh, you're one of the few that can say has worked under Coach Tar and Coach Bear. Uh, they're both, again, reunited working together on the U.S. national team. How do you compare those two? How similar are they to each other? I've always wanted to know that. How similar are Because they both kind of deflected when I asked them. So you're the perfect yeah. source. How are they that's similar? So How are they different there? <laughs> Um, wow. That's a great question. Cause I, you know, everybody as humans, we grow and we develop throughout the years. And, um, you know, and I is, it's been amazing to see coach Barry evolve from, you know, being my like freshman, sophomore year. And she was like on staff there, to, like everything she's accomplished from then till now. And just seeing her growth as a head coach and her development, it's just been amazing to watch. Like she is just always pushing the envelope her ability to just continue to fight for what she believes in, what she wants. Like, I respect that tremendously about Bear. And I think Coach Tar and Coach Bear are very similar in like culture being the foundation of what who we are, like as a program. I think the culture piece is a separating piece with championship level programs and they both value it. They both foster it they both water it they both um make that a priority and just from a, like a culture and a leadership standpoint I think that is something very similar with the both of them and of course the values maybe just like slightly whatever they're for their own program but just the whole overall culture piece is something that both of them I think thrive in teaching and thrive in developing and thrive in like executing within their programs um, coach Carr and coach Bear I mean 
I think one thing special about being around Coach Bear is just being around her, her kids and her family and seeing her be able to do it all. I think that's something that's always inspired me in sport and someone who aspires to, you know, one day have a family just to be under a mom who has three young kids and is literally, you know, breaking barriers and creating history within her program and just seeing her be able to do that on a day-to-day -day basis and see her open up her home to her players and her team and just really have, like, I'll never forget when my dad came out and visited UCF and he was just like, wow, like, like, it was genuine that everyone, like, it felt like family. It really did. And you could feel that being around the program. And of course, like family, family, family. And it, you just like having her family integrated in everything she does was really inspiring for me to be around and see and motivating at the same time, because, you know, she's doing it at the highest level and, you know, more people need to see that it can be done and that you can have a family and you can be successful in the sport so that's one thing I definitely take from Coach Bear um, that I value and really respect um they're very there's when it comes to softball there's a lot of similarities I don't there's way more similarities than there are differences um so I I, I don't know nothing pops top of mind that's a good answer it's a yeah. good answer I think they both appreciate that that's good yeah <laughs> like that <laughs> uh you bring up the family I'll never forget last year obviously uh, the season opening weekend, ironically enough, as your first weekend at Ohio State staff, they happened to play at UCF in mm -hmm. the tournament. Uh, and obviously UCF was one of those games that was unique, but I'll never forget her kids came and hugged you. Yes. Uh, and that was a little emotional, wasn't it? That was a little. It was. It was. I mean, you spend so much time around the people you work with every day and they are family. You almost spend more time around them than you do your actual family. And um, I just, I love her kiddos to death and they're a special family. Even, I mean, Bear and Bobby, like their family is like family to me. And even when we see each other out on the road recruiting, or I remember over the summer, we we're at the ballpark during nationals. And um, why am I drawing a blank right now? <laughs> um, the little one, why am I drawing a blank? Kaysen, on what are you talking about? Ryder? Four? Kaysen? No, Kaysen. Why am I drawing? Oh, sorry. Kaysen. Kaysen's running around the ballpark and I'm like literally playing tag with him and like you're just those relationships and and those people and her family are just special to me and they always will be. Yeah, I think Kaysen was the one that hugged you first. I don't remember. I'm not going to start. I'm not going to pick fights. I'll pick which one. Which <laughs> the three hugs well, Kaysen usually travels, I think, on the road with, with Bear the most. Kaysen definitely was with her in California. Well, he's, he's got the charm thing going. You know, he's got he does. Uh, <laughs> well, you mentioned that. I know that was a difficult decision to leave. Uh, you said it was one of the toughest decisions. It was. To leave, but you had to take the opportunity to high Take you know, When that decision came about there, obviously Coach Kelly, and, and we've talked about the great history she's had with the assistants and what they've gone on to head coaches. But it was more than that. You wanted another, you mentioned a different experience, right? Like, and going out to the Midwest, just, that was that was a big part of that decision, wasn't it? Right. It was just continuing to, you know, grow and develop. And like I had mentioned, um, it wasn't something I was like actively seeking or looking for. But in conversation, you know, it has allowed me now. I mean, I've been in the Pacific Northwest. I grew up in Southern California. I mean, I've been in Florida now and then now I'm in Ohio and in the Midwest. And so it's just another it's been an opportunity for me to continue to connect with, you know, and meet new coaches and um, also, you know, in conversation, like I knew there could potentially be opportunities for the role that I'm in right now. And so it's just, you know, and having conversations with the AD and speaking to him about like my goals and what I want to do, you know, he literally came back and was like, well, that's our job. That's our job to make sure you get there and just continuing to have opportunities to develop professionally and set myself up to be the best person I can be in one day, hopefully, like leading my own program. And so um, it's, you know, the opportunities here at Ohio State in the athletic department around, like, we have 36 sports. And a lot of our sport coaches have won a lot of national championships, and they've been here for quite a while. So just continuing to be in that environment and learn from those types of coaches, as well as Coach Kelly and our athletic department. And um, it's a great opportunity for me to continue to broaden, you know, who I am, my network, and uh, my experiences. I mean, I didn't have much experience with the Big Ten prior to this. And um, now, of course, Big Ten's changing. And so it's just a good spot for me to be in right now to continue to, you know, learn and grow. Yeah. And about 
as of July, next uh, July 1st, you could say you're a Big Ten alum. Oh my gosh. <laughs> right. Uh, that's crazy. Washington's going to be coming in with UCLA and Oregon uh, into the Big Ten. So uh, I have a feeling Coach Kelly uh, will be de- really heavy dependent on you to get that scout report on those programs. My goodness. <laughs> right. I know. <laughs> Who's going to, I mean, and plus Coach Starr's probably going to be blowing your phone up. Where do I go eat in the Midwest? <laughs> Some of right. the places. The Big I know. Ten. Right. That's so true. She definitely will be. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be weird for you because I don't think you, yeah, you haven't, uh, that's going to be a unique year. I know it's a year away, but you and Washington are going to be in the same conference in the most unique, bizarre way. I mean, just like right. obviously the Big 12, UCF's now in the Big 12 this year. Right. Uh, well, it's pretty interesting too. I mean, the football schedule for 25, is it 25? The the football season schedule has been released for 24. That yeah, 24. Yeah, for 24. And so it'll be interesting once it gets released for softball, just with every year we don't play every team. So it'll be interesting what like ends up playing out that first year as well. With, it's going to be wild. With the schedule. Um, yeah, it will be wild. We'll see. What do you think? Do you want to, I mean, that could be unique. Could have Ohio State throw to Washington, could be a home <laughs> trip, or they could come to Columbus and then you're going to have to like, you know, say, yeah, go to this restaurant. So either way, you know, we'll right. see that Right. Eventually, eventually it'll be, it'll go both ways eventually. So we'll have a. Well, you have plenty of experience already with storylines. I mean, you played UCF last year. You played Georgia. I remember UCF and coach JT. So you're all, you're used to, you're comfortable facing like friends and families already. I mean, you've faced Right. Them. Well, and I feel like I'm removed from Washington to where there's not too many people. I don't think on the team currently that I actually coach. So, um, yeah, we're, we're removed the from The is on the staff, though, right? The space is on the staff. Courtney Gano's on the staff. Courtney and I played together Courtney, as well. That's right. Yeah. And then, of course, Vic and I were in the same class. So, I mean, of course, I'm very familiar with all three of them and very close with all of them. <laughs> yeah, Sammy, Re- Sammy Reynolds is on staff, too. So it's like, yeah, Sammy, Sis, Courtney, and Vic. And, wow, that's right. Yeah. And, of course, you got Jen over at UCF. Yes. I mean, it's uh, – I feel like they all have – Kaya's at Utah, yep. I feel like there's like a documentary y'all could do right there. That's <laughs> right. Kind of, it's written there. Uh, um, quick couple thoughts before I let you go. Obviously, you've been to Ohio State. Buckeye football game. Give me the – what's the – I know you've been to a couple of those, a few of those now. I what's have, the experience like? Man, I was spoiled. My very first Buckeye football game was last year against Notre Dame. Sold out oh. crowd. Yeah, sold out crowd. I literally, I mean, the first time I walked in that stadium with it, when it was empty, I instantly got the chills. And then being in the stadium when it sold out and just hearing the crowd, literally, there's this chant that starts in one end zone and everyone's like, oh, then one sideline's like, H, yeah. the other student section's like, I, and then the other sideline's like, oh, and just the traditions with the band and Carmen and just, there's so much rich tradition here at Ohio State, especially with football and being in that environment is is unlike one I've ever been in. I've never been in a football stadium that has over a hundred thousand people um, in it. So <laughs> it's it's unreal. It's unreal. It's indescribable. You have to experience it to, to truly know what I'm saying. Have you gone to an Ohio State Michigan game yet? I have not. So okay, you, you need to cross that off. I do. I do. Well, last year during recruiting, typically the last weekend of recruiting, I'm in California most of the time and. I typically stay on the back end and see my family for Thanksgiving. And so that's what I did last year. So I missed the game, but I do have to check that, check that off. For Either sure. that at some point. Yeah. You might, you might have to uh, figure that out or uh, who knows. Uh, Most definitely. If Ohio state ends up playing in the Rose bowl in the playoff game, you, may, you could just stay there in California. At that degree. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to, it's going to work itself out. <laughs> well, nobody knows the Ohio state Michigan rivalry more than coach Kelly, uh, Kovac, Shane, like, what have you learned from her in the year now, two years now, going on two years working with her, her style? She won her 500th game last year. What have, what's it been like with her? That was super exciting for her. I was just so happy to be a part of that and be a part of that experience for her. And I mean, her being here for as long as she's been here, just the pride she takes in, in Ohio State and being a Buckeye and what she teaches our players about, like taking pride in what we do and, you know, being disciplined to what we do. Like last year, you know, three things we really focused on was pride discipline and um you know the third was being like competitive at the end of the day like you know like we got literally like it's we're so fortunate to get to do what we do on a daily basis and so just continuing to take pride in that and being disciplined and um who we are as people and you know sometimes 
want the needs, you got to do what you need to do, even if you don't want to. And um, I just learned a lot from her too, from just like office management and learning more about the Big Ten. And um, she just taught me a lot too, and kind of more of the off the field kind of development growth and giving me like, like I said, I'm taking on more recruiting responsibility this year. And so just the autonomy she's given me to kind of grow in those spaces and continue to get more responsibility and, and learn and grow has been amazing. So she's just taught me a ton from um, that standpoint. You've wrapped up fall ball games and you're wrapping up most of the fall stuff before you know it, the season will get be here in February. What's going to be the keys for this group, for this Buckeyes team uh, to, uh, to accomplish your goals and get back to the NCAA tournament? I think keys for us are just going to be consistency, um, you know, and continuing to train our responses when, you know, maybe like, because you can spiral, you know, things can spiral and it's like, how can we catch something early and, you know, rebound, like how, how fast we rebound and how fast we can get back when everyone hits adversity at some point in the season. And so it's just like our response to when we hit adversity is going to be key for us this year because we know it's going to happen. So how quickly can we respond and get back? where we need to be I think that's going to be a huge piece and then just all of us working together I mean at the end of the day like all of us togetherness is going to be better than any one individual like we all know that so just continuing to um, own our roles continuing to be prepared for when our opportunities do come and continuing to execute when the game's on the line I think that's going to be huge for us like finishing games and executing when we need to are going to be key key factors for us that's Whitney Jones, associate head coach, Ohio State, here on In the Circle. Uh, appreciate you taking the time. This is fun catching up. Uh, always as great. always, uh, great to have you back on the show. Uh, good luck uh, this upcoming season. We'll be in touch and uh, hope to. Uh, we'll definitely get you back on down the road. And like I said, listen, maybe maybe if you hook me up to a ticket to the Ohio State, maybe if you can't make it, I'll I'll fill in for you. All righty, I got gotcha. you. Thanks, Elo. <laughs> Go back.